What's up, fam? It's me, and I'm back. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's being smart. Um, I just wanted to come to y'all real quick with a little bit of breaking news. Uh, some of you may know this. Some of you may not. But uh, I want to come to you real quick with this little bit of breaking news because it's getting late. It's Well, it's actually it's early. It's 2 it's two ten a.m. Um, in Reesville, North Carolina, where I am. So I just wanted to come and bring y'all this breaking news and, and let y'all know what's going on, keep you informed. Um, it, it's not going to come as a surprise to anybody because we've already talked about it. We've already said that this was going to happen. We already knew it was going to happen. But, you know, just to keep you in the loop and let you know that um, when the new black media forecasts something, uh, nine times out of ten, we're right about it. So, um... This is from the Washington Post, National Security, um, and the headline is Justice Department, FBI, and, and the FBI debate not charging some of the Capitol rioters, right? Okay. This was January the 23rd, uh, 2021 at 121 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's by Devin Barrett and Spencer S. Sue. Federal law enforcement officials are privately debating whether they should decline to charge some of the individuals who stormed the, the U.S. Capitol this month. A politically loaded proposition, but one alert to the practical concern that hundreds of such cases could swamp the local courthouse. So, basically, we don't want to overload the courts by charging these people. You understand what I'm saying? That's going to be the excuse that they need to let these white supremacists walk with, uh, with no charges at all now. So, probably what little bit of stuff that they didn't already charge them with, because we already know they're only charged with misdemeanor uh, breaking and entering and misdemeanor uh, uh, trespassing and misdemeanor larceny and all uh, petty larceny and stuff like that. Uh, they just gonna probably just drop everything. They probably just gonna drop all the charges. Okay, the internal discussions are in their early stages, and no decisions have been reached about whether to forego charging some of those who illegally entered the Capitol on January the sixth. Now it's illegally entered the Capitol. You understand what I'm saying? Not storm the Capitol, not uh, 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 not went in to overthrow the government, none of that. You understand what I'm saying? When we see these people that were armed, these people with zip ties, you know, these people breaking in, stealing laptops and iPad, iPads and all of this, you know what I'm saying? Now, it, it, it's just, you know, they just illegally entered the Capitol. They didn't have the legal right to be there. So, you, you know, now we just got to, you, you know, we got to wonder whether or not we should even go through the process of overloading the court and swamping the courts with all of these cases. Right. According to multiple people familiar with the discussions. Justice Department officials have promised a relentless effort to identify and arrest those who stormed the Capitol that day. But internally, there is robust back and forth about whether charging them all is the best course of action. Now again, remember, one black person does something and they find a way to charge the whole community, everybody in the family. They start throwing RICO charges on people. It's automatic felonies and all of that. But they wondering if, 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 if charging all of these folks would be the best course of action. So we already knew that this was going to happen. We already knew that they were going to find some reason. They were going to find some way to keep from charging these people with anything serious. That debate comes at a time when officials are keenly sensitive that the credibility of the Justice Department and the FBI are at stake in such decisions. Given the apparent security, the apparent. Remember now, remember, anytime they're talking about white folks, these, these, the, 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 this white mainstream media, anytime they're talking about white folks, it's always apparent or, 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 or alleged 
or it appears to be, or it seems to be, you know, there's always this little question. But anytime they're talking about somebody black, it is what it is. And it's stated as a matter of fact, right? Given the apparent security and intelligent failures that preceded the riot, these people said, speaking on the condition of anonymity to discuss legal uh, deliberations. Federal officials, federal officials estimate that roughly 800 people surged into the building, though they cautioned that such numbers are imprecise and the real figure could be 100 people or more in either direction. Now, we saw all those folks. We saw all those folks. You understand what I'm saying? And it looked like well over 1,000, if not more people. You know, they swinging all from the uh, uh, from, from the balconies and, 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 and rushing in the door and breaking in windows and all of this. We saw all of those folks. But now they're saying, you know, that, that 800 number, you know, it, it, it's, it's imprecise. It's, it's, not, it, it's not real. You know, it could be less. You know, it might be more, but it could be less. You know, all of this to cover for these white folks. White supremacy on code covering for white supremacy. See, that's the reason why black folks need to get it together. Y'all need to stop being so dumb and so stupid and start getting on code. Because white folks are on code. These white folks threatened their own government. And their government is on code with them to protect them. Among those roughly 800 people, FBI agents and prosecutors have so far seen a broad mix of behavior. From people dressed for military battle, moving in formation to wanton vandalism, to simply going with the crowd into the building. Due to the wide variety of behavior, some federal officials have argued internally that those people who are known only to have committed unlawful injury and were not engaged in violent, threatening, or destructive behavior should not be charged, according to people familiar with the discussions. So again, it's not guilt by association. It's not guilt because you were just there. It's not guilt because you were a part of this mob that was storming and 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 and, and, and terrorizing the state capitol. No. Cause see, you're not black. You're not like black folks. See, they don't separate black folks out like that. If it's a crowd of black folks doing something, you understand what I'm saying? They don't look at the different behaviors to see who's being violent. You understand what I'm saying? Who was just there uh, 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 entering the building illegally? You understand what I'm saying? And who was just there following the crowd? No, 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 no. When it's black folks, all of you committed a felony. All of you committed a crime. Now all of you going to prison. But over here with these white supremacists, no, we're going to pick and choose. We're going to separate and, and we're going to figure out who was doing what. Other agents and prosecutors have pushed back against that suggestion, arguing that it is important to send a forceful message that the kind of political violence and mayhem on display June 6 needs to be punished to the full extent of the law so as to discourage similar conduct in the future. So it's obvious you got a few folks up there that, that, that are like, okay, you know, we're going to have to put an end to this. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to have to set an example. But who do you think is going to win? Whose voice do you think is going to end up being the loudest? Now, they, they might sacrifice one or two, just like they, they're trying to sacrifice uh, uh, Trump on the altar of their religion, white supremacy. So they might sacrifice one or two, but I guarantee you, it won't be punishment to the full extent of the law. There are a host of other factors complicating the discussions, many of which center not around the, po the politics of the riot, but the real world work of investigators and prosecutors, these people said. The Justice Department has already charged more than 135 individuals with committing crimes in or around the Capitol building, and many more are expected to be charged in the coming weeks and months. Uh, what are they charged with? <laughs> All misdemeanors. 
I don't I, I don't think we've seen a felony. By mid-January, the FBI had already received more than 200,000 tips from the public about the riot, in addition to news footage and police officer testimony. There is absolute re resolve from the Department of Justice to hold all who intentionally engaged in criminal acts at the, count at the Capitol accountable. And see, this too is also their way of covering for law enforcement. Their way of covering for the Capitol Police, you understand what I'm saying, and other law enforcement that was involved in this storming of the Capitol. See, this is their way of covering for the police, you understand what I'm saying, to keep law enforcement from being punished. Because like I've told you, white supremacy is not going to punish law enforcement. Law enforcement is the creation of white supremacy. Law enforcement, uh, uh, white supremacy needs and uses law enforcement on a daily basis. So white supremacy is not going to punish law enforcement. So this is setting the stage to keep law enforcement from being punished as well. Justice Department spokesperson Mark Ramondi said in, the, in, an, in an email, we have consistently made clear that we will follow the facts and evidence and charge individuals accordingly. We remain confident that the U.S. District Court of Washington, D.C. can appropriately handle the docket related to any resulting charges. They don't worry about dockets and don't worry about whether or not uh, uh, the courts can handle the dockets and, and whether or not they swamping uh, 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 the courts when they arrest all of these black men on all these petty made up charges and when they and when they gather up whole neighborhoods of people and try to throw gang injunctions on them in, 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 in over in California and RICO charges and all that they don't worry about the courts being swamped the primary objective for authorities is to determine which individuals, if any, if any, <laughs> planned, orchestrated, or directed the violence. So we're just supposed to believe that that was just a bunch of folks that just all of a sudden just got out of hand and, 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 and you know, it wasn't planned, it wasn't orchestrated, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, it didn't have any real purpose or any real intention. It was just a mob of people that just got out of hand. Just like the New York Times in the article that we just read a couple of videos ago where the New York Times tried to set it up like these were just, you know, a bunch of brain dead, idiot, uh, 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 uneducated, unthinking folks. You understand what I'm saying? They were so caught up in Trump's rhetoric and so deceived by Trump till they just couldn't control themselves. So here again, they're trying to say the same thing. Why? Because they're trying to overshadow the information that we already have about these people knowing where certain uh, 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 representatives' offices were that were not uh, uh, labeled. They passed uh, old Jim, old Jim Crow, Jim Clogborn. They passed his office with his name on it, and they found the other little office that he used that was unmarked. And his question was, how would they know that that was his office? They found Nancy Pelosi's office. They found all of these places that they're not supposed to know the landscape. They're not supposed to know the floor plan. You got other, uh, you, you, you had that woman representative. Uh, I can't remember her name, but I think she was a Hispanic woman. They came out and said that because of the layout of the Capitol, a lot of the people that actually work there get lost sometimes. And lose their way sometimes. So how did these people who are never there. You understand what I'm saying. Find all of these targets. And find all of these areas that they meant to find. So now mainstream media wants to cover that up. Mainstream media wants to give you another narrative. 
You understand what I'm saying? That this wasn't planned. This wasn't orchestrated. This wasn't directed. These people didn't have any inside help. You understand what I'm saying? It was just a crowd that got out of hand. It was just a mob that got out of hand. It was just a Trump rally that got out of hand. Right? To that end, the FBI has already found worrying linkages within such extremist groups as the Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, and the Three Percenters, and is looking to see if those groups coordinated with, with each other to storm the building, according to people familiar with the investigation. But even if they did coordinate with each other to storm the building, that doesn't explain how they know where these particular offices were and how they knew how to find certain places, certain offices, how they knew exactly where the chamber was, where the Senate was handling its business. So now to get the heat off of law enforcement, they're going to try to shift it over to the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, and the Three Percenters. But we didn't already had the Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, and Three Percenters come out talking about how they no longer support Trump, how Trump is weak, you understand what I'm saying? How they going to go dark and they going to retreat and all of this. So we got to be able to connect the dots. Prosecutors have signaled that they are looking to bring charges of seditious conspiracy against anyone who planned and carried out violence aimed at the government. A charge that carries a maximum possible prison sentence of 20 years. 20 years now for sedition. 20 years now for conspiring to overgo, overthrow the government and do harm to the government or governmental officials. But we got black men spending 30, 40, 50 years in prison behind weed on drug charges. And Biden ain't said a thing about that. You notice with all of them, exec we just talked about that, with all of them executive orders and actions and everything that he did on the first three days, you notice he didn't say anything. We already know he didn't say anything about, uh, 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 about black folks. Uh, 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 he didn't even uh, say anything about people of color or minorities. And on his first day, uh, five, no, six. Well, about immigration and immigration alone, I think it was four of those that was about illegal, um, illegal aliens. But you notice he didn't say anything. He didn't even give them a, 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 a little crumb off the table and say anything about mass incarceration. But even as Justice Department officials look to bring those types of cases they privately acknowledge those more determined and dangerous individuals may have operated within a broader sea of people who rushed through the doors but didn't do much else and prosecutors will ultimately have to have to decide if all of those lesser offenders should be charged so now they're trying to act like they can't figure out who did what basically basically now they tr they're trying to act like now they're playing stupid now they doing what they do all the time when it comes to punishing white folks and punishing white supremacy for the things that it does wrong. Now they're trying to play stupid. Well, who do we really charge? You know, do we even know who we're really going to charge? You know, well, how do we charge? You know, how do we separate the... See, now they're trying to play dumb. But if it was a bunch of black folks, they wouldn't have no problem knowing who to charge, how to charge, when to charge, where to charge, and what to charge. Everybody would just get charged. Officials insist that they are not under pressure in regards to timing of decisions about how to handle those types of cases. For one thing, investigators are still gathering evidence and agents, and agents could easily turn up additional photos or online postings that show a person they initially believed was harmless had in fact encouraged or engaged in other crimes. Now, you got folks with, with, with bombs. They found folks with pop, pipe bombs and all of this in trucks. You got folks coming in with all of this ammunition and everything. You got these folks with zip ties and they armed and they got on military uh, 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 vests and all of this. 
And, and, and these folks wasn't hiding their faces. I mean, police officers taking selfies with them. They posting all kinds of stuff on social media. But now all of a sudden they can't find nobody. Now all of a sudden they don't know who to charge. Now all of a sudden they don't know who instigated what and who directed what and, and who and who did what. Oh, Lord have mercy. Investigators also expect that some of those charged in the riot will eventually cooperate and provide evidence against others. And that could change their understanding of what certain people said or did that day, these people said. These people said are the people that are supposed to be the insiders that have this information, but they wanted to remain anonymous. Nevertheless, these people said, these people said, <laughs> Some in federal law enforcement are concerned that charging people solely with unlawful entry, injury, entry when they are not known to have committed any other bad acts could lead to losses if they go to trial. So see, they, they, they already setting the stage. They already making all the excuses. All the excuses to just let these folks walk away from this. But this is what white supremacy does. This is how white supremacy gets on code. If an old man says all he did was walk in and no one tried to stop him and he walked out and no one tried to stop him and that's all we know about what he did, that's a case we may not win, one official said. Another official noted most of those arrested so far have no criminal records. Meanwhile, defense lawyers for some of those charged are contemplating something akin to a Trump defense. That the president or other authority figures gave them permission or invited them to commit an otherwise illegal act. I told you they was going to try to make Trump the sacrificial lamb. I told you they were going to sacrifice him on the altar of white supremacy. So now they're going to try to say that Trump gave them these people permission to storm the Capitol. And to commit violence. To kill a police officer. To beat other police officers. If you think of yourself as a soldier doing the bidding of the commander in chief. You don't try to hide your actions. See? Now they soldiers. Now they were thinking of themselves as soldiers. Do you see this? Do you see the bullshit? Do you see the bullshit that the mainstream media is throwing out here? Oh, now they soldiers. They saw themselves as, 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 as soldiers. And Trump, as the commander-in-chief, gave them a, 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 um, a command. So they weren't trying to hide their actions because they were operating as soldiers doing the bidding of the commander-in-chief. Oh, God. You assume you will be held up as a hero by the nation. Criminal defense lawyers Terry Canefield and Mark Rickle wrote last week. Such a defense might not forestall charges, could, but could be affected at trial or sentencing. Trump's looming impeachment trial in the Senate will also focus further attention on his actions and raise questions about the cap culpability of followers for the misinformation spread by leaders around bogus election fraud claims rejected by courts and state vo uh, voting officials. So again, just like I said in the last video, they're going to try to act like these folks were just so swayed by Trump, so deceived by Trump. You understand what I'm saying? They had just bought into all of these lies about uh, voter fraud and everything that that was the reason why they were doing all of this stuff that they were doing. It's not, a, it's not like a bunch of people gathered on their own and decided to do this. It's not like a mob. It's, it's people who were asked to come by the president, encouraged to come by the president, and encouraged to do what they did by the president and a number of others. I ain't heard Trump tell nobody to storm the Capitol. I ain't heard Trump tell nobody to go to Nancy Pelosi's office and put your feet up on her desk. I ain't heard Trump tell nobody to kill a police officer. I ain't heard Trump tell nobody to storm the Senate chamber. But this is why, this, see, this is the perfect example of white supremacy getting on code. 
This is the perfect example of white supremacy doing what it needs to do to protect white supremacy. And foundational black Americans, the ones who haven't gotten it yet, the ones who haven't fully woke up yet, the ones who have not digested the truth yet, or the ones who are too afraid to accept the truth, ain't got sense enough to get on cold like these folks. And that's the reason why we stay behind. Because every other group knows how to get on cold. Every other group knows how to circle its wagon and, and wagons and protect itself. Now these folks went up there talking about killing Nancy Pelosi. Some of the people that were up there are the very same people who had planned months before, like I said, to kidnap and possibly kill a whole sitting governor. That's not something that Trump told them to do. That's not something that had anything to do with an election. That was simply because they were pissed about having to wear masks and things being shut down and them not being able to go where they wanted to go and all of this. But now they're going to try to use Trump and his insistence that the election was a fraud and that the election was stolen as an excuse for what these folks did. For what all these grown folks did who have minds of their own. It's not like a bunch of people gathered on their own and decided to do this. It's not like a mob. It's people who were asked to come by the president. It was a Trump rally. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't nobody made you come to no rally. You can go to the rally or you don't go to the rally. Ain't nobody told you to storm no capital. Ain't nobody told you to start beating up police and breaking windows. And, 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 and ain't nobody told you to do all that. It's people who were asked to come by the president. Encouraged to come by the president. And encouraged to do what they did by the president and a number of others. Said one attorney representing defendants charged in the breach. Who spoke on the condition of an anonymity to discuss legal strategy. Prosecutors have other options for rioters with no previous criminal records or conviction and whose known behavior inside the Capitol was not violent or destructive, the government could enter into deferred plea agreements, a diversion program akin to pre-trial probation in which prosecutors agree to drop charges. <laughs> If a defendant commits no offenses over a certain, uh, a certain period of time. We already know most of the charges going to be dropped. Because they go all, we, they telling you right here. Right here. They are telling you what they are going to use as a defense. Trump made me do it. Trump made me do it. You know that old saying, the devil made me do it. Well, in this case, it's going to be Trump made me do it. I just don't get, I, I, I just, I honestly don't get why black folks don't get this. I honestly don't get why we still doing stupid stuff. And why folks can still offer to offer us collard greens, black eyed peas, and cornbread for our vote. Why people can still offer us a fish sandwich for our, for our vote. You know, old Jim Clyburn down there in South Carolina and his fish fries that he have every year to get black folks to come in and vote. That, that, that Latasha woman, I got, to, I got to remember her name. The blonde head chick, uh, 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 the blonde head black chick, La, Latasha somebody, I got to remember her, her last name. But she runs that organization, Black Votes Matter, down there in Georgia for, for the Senate race. For the uh, for the for the for the uh, the two con uh, Senate seats that were open, she down there giving out plates with with collard greens, black eyed peas, and cornbread. Why are we still that stupid? It's not it's not just that we are not pol politically savvy. We're just stupid. All folks got to do is offer us a smile. You understand what I'm saying? A little dance. Yeah, uh, 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 a pat on the back. 
You understand what I'm saying? We see somebody that 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 that, that act like they are part of the culture by wearing some of our clothing or, or by speaking some of our so-called lingo or listening to some of our so-called music or whatever, and we fall for the bullshit hook, hook line and sinker. And here these white folks is right here in the Washington Post telling you. That these white supremacists are not in at all going to be charged for what they did. And two people died. One of them, Ashley uh, 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 Bobbitt and, and, and Rick Sesnick, I think his, his name was, the police officer that died. Two people died. Ain't nobody talking about the two people that died. But these white supremacists make you think that they're about blue lives matter. And, 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 and we back the blue. And we support the blue and all this. But you don't hear nobody talking about this police officer that died. You don't hear anything about anybody being charged with murder for this police officer that was beat to death. So see that back the blue mess and that blue lives matter mess. It's just white supremacy's way. You understand what I'm saying? Of, 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 it's their comeback when we talk about Black Lives Matter. I'm not talking about the Black Lives Matter organization. I'm just talking about the, 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 the grassroots, um, slogan of Black Lives Matter. Not talking about the organization. Because we know the Black Lives Matter organization is bullshit. We all know that. But nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about the fact that a man lost his life and another woman lost her life. You understand what I'm saying? In the midst of all of this, two people died. As well as, as, as several, several other people being injured. But ain't nobody talking about this. But they putting it right out here in mainstream media for you to see and read for yourself that they already got the defense worked out. The fix is already in. We're going to blame Trump. Trump made me do it. I got caught up in the Trump rhetoric. I believed his lies. I was a soldier doing the bidding of my commander in chief. I felt like I would be hailed as a national hero. And you ain't heard Biden say not one word about punishing these people. You ain't heard him say not one word about we need to combat white supremacy. We need to get rid of white supremacy. We need to deal with white supremacy head on. Even though the government itself has said that white supremacy is the biggest threat to U.S. national security. You ain't heard Biden say a word about, yes, we need to prosecute these people to the fullest extent of the law. Yes, we need to handle this. Prosecutors have other... Okay, I, do, I don't already read that. Such a resolution would not result in even a misdemeanor conviction. And has been used before in some cases involving individuals with a history of mental illness who were arrested for jumping the White House fence. Crim criminal defense attorneys note there may be further distinctions between individuals who may have witnessed illegal activity or otherwise had reason to know they were entering a restricted area and those for whom prosecutors can't show such awareness. Now they worried about these folks having criminal... Um, uh, 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 convictions. They weren't about these folks having felonies on their records. Why? Because white folks don't need felonies on their on their records. They don't want white folks with felonies on their records. See, they reserve felonies for us black folks because they know that felonies. Change your whole life. That a felony follows you for the rest of your life. 
that a felony affects every area of your life. It, fa it affects you getting a job. It sometimes it affects you getting housing. It affects you being able to get certain pu pu public services that you might need. It affects you being able to get an education. Felonies affect every part of your life. So see, they want to make sure that they keep these white folks from having any felonies on their records behind this. That's the reason why, so far, we haven't heard about anybody really being charged with any serious felony charges. And for those who may end up with, you know, quote unquote, some kind of little small felony charge, we already, they've already put it out here what the defense is going to be. Trump made me do it. I was told that it was okay to do this by my commander in chief, by the president of the United States. So the fix is already in. And remember, I just want to remind you, Biden ain't saying nothing about these folks need to be punished. These folks need to be handled. White supremacy needs to be brought down. We need to start a war on white supremacy. You know, they good for starting wars. You understand what I'm saying? Nixon with the war on drugs. Uh, then Reagan picked it up with the war on drugs. And, and then here come Clinton with the war on crime. We're going to be hard on crime. And, 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 and further with the war on drugs. Biden was a part of that. Then it was uh, uh, Bush and all them with the war on terrorism. Okay, but you ain't heard Biden say nothing about a war on white supremacy, have you? There's also a question over whether charging other rioters could swamp the federal court system. In 2019, D.C. federal courts recorded only about 430 criminal cases and fewer than 300 last year when the legal system slowed significantly, significantly due to the pandemic. Many of those cases, however, had multiple de defendants. They was probably mostly black. The workload of prosecuting the rioters could be eased if some of the cases were farmed out to other U.S. attorney offices around the country. But so far, D.C. prosecutors have shown no interest in doing so. The law generally requires that ind individuals be prosecuted in the district in which a crime occurred. Well, we all know that. So, see, they're trying to come up with all kinds of excuses. They can't, they trying to come up with all kinds of excuses and, and, and reasons why they can't prosecute these people really to the full extent of the law. But th th this is no surprise to us. We said that this was going to happen. We always knew that nothing was going to happen to these folks. Now, yes, at the end of the day, like I said, they might sacrifice one or two. One or two might end up with a one or two or three, maybe five year sentence or whatever. And then nine times out of ten, that'll be a, 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 a broke down to probation or, what, a, a, or whatever. But nobody is seriously going to be punished for, for what happened on January the 6th. Because white supremacy is not going to allow it. The crime happened here. Prosecutors and judges can see the crime scene from their office windows. I find it strange anyone would suggest it be done anywhere else. A person familiar with the investigation said, speaking on the condition of anonymity again, to discuss an internal debate. Beyond all the evidence gathering and charging decisions left to do, federal officials concede there will likely be some number of people who were there that day and are simply never identified. Okay. Due to some combination of luck, mask, or lack of social media post. And that's the end of that. And I agree, you know, I agree. We th th There's no way that they're going to be able to identify everybody that took place in there. But I, I mean, because it was hundreds of people. Hundreds of people. You understand what I'm saying? But the people that they can identify, you understand what I'm saying? The people who were not trying to hide, they did not have on masks. They did their social media posting. They let it be known that they were there. I, I mean, they talked about it prior to on all the different 
uh, 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 post and in all the different groups and all the different channels where they get together and talk about all of this kind of stuff. I, I, I mean, you know, but the, the, again, the fix is in. The fix is in. Now, there's another one. Now, this is concerning Trump, and I just want to read a little bit of this. I'm not going to read a whole lot, but I just want to read a little bit of this. And this is from the New York Times again. Um, this was January the 19th, 2021. And this was before he was inaugurated. Prosecute Trump, Biden is wary, but his voters are eager. Urging unity, the president-elect has tried to focus on his policy plans, but many of those who elected him are still fixated on his predecessor. He's a crook and needs to and needs to pay. So this is basically saying that Biden is wary of prosecute new new presidents want to look forward, not back. And Joseph R. Biden Jr. is no exception. Taking office with a lengthy menu of plans and aggressive timetable for scrubbing away the policies of his predecessor. But Mr. Biden's often expressed desire not to dwell on the sins or even the potential crimes of President Trump in the name of national unity. I mean, come on. That's like that's like the pot calling the kettle black. I mean, all of you ain't nothing but a bunch of crooks and criminals. I mean, uh, are we are we forgetting uh, Joe Biden's son's laptop that tells the host? Okay, so anyway. In the name of national unity is clashing with the will of Democratic voters who want to fully air any wrongdoing and punish Mr. Trump and his enablers after an election in which many Biden voters were inspired less by passion for him than by rage at the president. And, and he just put it all out there. He just said it the way it is. Most people did not vote because they wanted Biden. Most people voted, especially black folks. Because black folks allowed the, the, the mainstream media to fool them into believing instead of looking at their own lives. You understand what I'm saying? Looking at Trump's policies, looking at what was really going on around them, most black folks allowed mainstream media to convince them that Trump was this monster that we had to get rid of. You understand what I'm saying? So they weren't really all that enthused about Biden they voted by they voted for Biden mo mostly because he wasn't Trump. Not because of Biden's policies, not because Biden had anything to offer, certainly not because Biden promised us black folks anything, because he never promised us anything. But fear. This fear of some unknown boogeyman. And Trump had been in office for six years. Yeah, he had a lot of mouth. Yeah, he said a lot of stupid shit. Yeah, he said a lot of racist shit. But did his policies support that racist shit that he was talking about? Against black folk? No. Honestly, they didn't. But because black people have been so conditioned to pay attention to mainstream media and to believe whatever white folks tell you, if white folks tell you it's bad, it's bad. If white folks tell you it's good, it's good. White folks tell you it's bad. Okay, well, well, yeah, the white folks said it was good, it was bad, but but it ain't bothering me. So I don't but but still the white folks said it was bad. White folks said this is good, yeah, but damn it hurts. Damn, it makes me feel bad. Damn, it's killing me. But but the white folks said it was good. You see what I'm saying? 
But anyway, let's keep going. Starting with a split screen inauguration week in which Mr. Trump's Senate impeachment trial could begin as soon as Thursday. The opening chapters of the new administration are likely to be marked by tension among Democrats about how to move forward. Party institu institutionalists led by Mr. Biden want to hammer out deals with con congressional Republicans. While the Democratic base is eager for Mr. Trump, his allies, and his family members to be held full, fully accountable. Fully accountable for what? See, again... Paying attention to mainstream media. Mainstream media done told you that Trump, Trump done committed all of these crimes. What crimes? And what crimes did he commit against black folks? Many of us voted to get Trump out. Not necessarily to be pro-Biden. Now how stupid is that? You're going to vote for Biden. You're not really pro-Biden. Biden isn't offering you anything. Evidently, you don't like Biden's policies because, or his plans because if you did, you would be pro-Biden. But you just wanted to get Trump out. So you were willing to give away your vote for nothing. You were willing to give away your leverage for nothing. Many of us voted to get Trump out, not necessarily to be pro-Biden, said Nancy McKeon, 47, a criminal defense lawyer in Philadelphia. Backing off of any sort of pr prosecution of Trump is going to alienate those people. And I have this listed in the... In, 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 um, in, in the in the description box, I have this article listed in there too, because uh, 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 Biden is not uh, uh, real big on really trying to prosecute Trump, really trying to do Trump any harm. Why? Because they're both uh, 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 they both are two wings, a part of two wings of the same bird. They're both white supremacy. You understand what I'm saying? They both work for the same folks. They they both they they both in the same club. They both have the same ob objective at the end of the day. So they don't really dislike each other. All of this, like I said before, all of this is a bunch of pol a, a political theater. So you know we'll just have to see how far they take this whole thing as far as Trump is concerned. But we already know that they're going to use Trump to be the defense against for the for the white supremacy white supremacists and all the white supremacy groups that did all of that stuff up there at the Capitol on January the sixth. But um, yeah, this, this this article didn't turn out to be quite what I thought it was going to be because I thought this was going to be connected to Trump's involvement. Or, 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 or Trump's alleged participation in everything that happened on January the 6th. But it's not. This is talking about his impeachment and all that. Now, I'll link it in the description box so you can read it because it's still worth a read. But it's not what I thought it was. But, um... But yeah, I will definitely have this Washington Post uh, uh, article where they talk about uh, uh, the, the Justice Department and the FBI debating on whether or not they're going to charge these folks and how they're going to charge them. And all of a sudden, everybody playing dumb and everybody don't know how to do nothing and everybody don't know who's supposed to be charged and how we're going to handle this. And we don't want to overload the courts and all that kind of stuff. They ain't never thought about none of that. And ain't none of that never been an issue when it comes to charging us. When it comes to charging black folks. Ain't none of that never been an issue. But again, it just goes to show. We know what we're talking about. White supremacy is not going to punish white supremacy. Now you understand why you get nobody in the government. 
You get no politicians. Nobody that's willing to talk about punishing law enforcement. That's the reason why you get nobody that's willing to have that conversation. Why? Because law enforcement is white supremacy. Like I said, they killed a whole police officer. And these are the people that are supposed to be about Blue Lives Matter and black and, and back the blue and the blue line and the thin blue line and all of that. These are the people, those folks, these white supremacist groups, these white nationalists, white extremist groups that were a part of all of this stuff that took place at the Capitol. These are the people that are supposed to be so pro-police, so pro-law enforcement. Yet they beat and killed a police officer, along with beating some other ones that didn't die. Nobody's mentioning that. Nobody's talking about that. If black folks were involved in this, all you would hear about would be that, that police officer, that white police officer that lost his life, that white police officer that lost his life trying to save the capital from these raging, crazed niggas. That's all you would hear about. If black folks was involved in this. But because it was white people. You ain't heard nobody say a word about that man. It's almost like it didn't happen. It's almost like that man did not exist. You have not heard mainstream media mention this man's name. You have not heard anybody say one word about anybody being held accountable for this man's death. Black folks, you got to get on code. Black folks, we got to do better. We got to put down all this bullshit. We got to put down all of this celebrating and wanting to dance all the time. And wanting to party all the time. You understand what I'm saying? And looking for somebody to give us something for free all the time. I'm not talking about reparations. Reparations is not somebody giving us something for free. Reparations is what they owe us. But a whole lot of folks in Georgia went out and voted... In that Senate race, because Joe Biden said something about a $2,000 stimulus check. When the $2,000 stimulus check was actually Trump's idea. He always wanted more than what they gave us. When are you going to be tired of not taking, being taken seriously? When are you going to be tired of people using food and music and entertainment and bullshit like that when they deal with you? Now, when we deal with any other group, when they deal with the Hispanics, the Chinese, the Asians, the Arabs, the Jews, anybody else, when they deal with any of the rest of these groups, they got to come with some serious business. They got to be on their A game when they come to any other group. They got to come talking about tangibles, talking about some real shit. But when they come to us, they come to us with bullshit, entertaining, dancing, food, symbolic bullshit. This is why they don't take us seriously. This is why they don't take us seriously in politics. This is why they don't take us seriously. In any, this is why they don't take us serious in the street. This is why they show us absolutely no respect. This is the reason why they feel like they can kill us whenever the hell they get ready to. This is the reason why. Because we have no self-respect. We have no respect for ourselves. We don't know how to, uh, uh, how to, to go to these people with business. I got business on my mind. And the only reason why I'm going to sit at this table with you is because you talk about tangibles. If you ain't talking about nothing tangible, I'm finna get up from this damn table. You're not finna offer me something to eat or offer me something to drink or offer me some kind of entertainment or offer me some kind of foolishness and I sit here and, and entertain you. Uh-uh, no. If you ain't talking about tangibles, I'm finna get up off of this. I'm finna get up from this table and I'm finna leave. That's what other groups do. We don't group do that. 
We sit at the table. They spread out some food. We sit there, hee hee, ha ha, laugh, drink, eat. They might bring out the dancing girls and all of that, and we get excited. And then by the time they finish with, with entertaining us and feeding us and getting our bellies full and all of that, we sign our whole fucking souls away and walk away with nothing. And then we want to be mad at them. We ain't got to be mad at them. Ain't no point in being mad at them. Them folks doing what they know they can do. Them folks is doing what they know they can do. Them folks is doing what they have always done. That's the sad part about it. They keep using the same playbook. They ain't changed their playbook from now since, since before slavery. They have not changed their, play, their playbook. They still would deal with us the exact same way they always have. Why? Because it continues to work over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the reason why the white folks ain't. That's the reason why the dominant society ain't trying to fix it. Why? Because it ain't broke. It works. We gonna throw them out there. This, 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 this nineteen. Tell them that the 19 is killing them more than it is anybody else. It's affecting them more than it is anybody else. If we put it on TV, if we put it on mainstream media, if we broadcast it enough, they dumb asses will believe it. Then we're going to tell them that Trump is the devil and that Trump is this hardcore white supremacist. And they've been dealing with white supremacy ever since they've been here. That's the only system most of them know. But we're going to tell them the whole system is Trump's fault. And they're going to believe it. So now all of a sudden, Trump is the author and the creator of white supremacy and racism. And you dummies bought that. Hook, hook line, and sinker, you bought it. And went and voted for this man. This man who stood up and told you the night that you supposedly handed him the presidency stood up and told you that you had his back and because you had his back, he was going to have your back. And then on his first day in office, he signed six presidential executive orders that didn't have jack shit to do with you. Then for the next two days, he signed some more that didn't have jack shit to do with you. And then he laid out his plans for the next hundred days that don't have jack shit to do with you. But Kamala looked good with them pearls and them chucks. Michelle's outfit was banging, honey, and her hair was laid. Oh, that little black girl sounded so good with doing that poem. All that symbolism. That's just like they set a plate in front of you. An empty plate. And they told you. All you got to do is close your eyes and imagine that every kind of food that you ever wanted to taste is on that plate. And y'all dumbasses closed your eyes and imagined that everything you ever wanted to eat was on that plate and you started eating thin air. Symbolism. You symbolically eating what ain't there. But I just wanted to come to you and I just wanted to let you know the defense that they have, that they are already planning, the fix is already in, we already knew it, we already knew it was going to go down this way. Now, like I said, I won't be surprised because they didn't already, they, they, they already going to sacrifice Trump. So they didn't already made Trump the bad guy for this. And they go, they're already letting you know that if anybody finds themselves hit with any real charges, that Trump will be what they use as their defense. Trump made me do it. I was a soldier doing the bidding of my commander in chief. Now, if you think I'm lying, 
This article will be linked in the description box and you can go read those words for yourself. And your boy Biden and your girl Skiwi Kamala Harris ain't saying shit about it. Ain't demanding that nothing be done. Ain't demanding and calling for no war on white supremacy. Although this same FBI has put out numerous reports talking about how pervasive and dangerous and what a threat white supremacy is and on this day january the 6th that threat was fulfilled we saw the manifestation of that threat and we ain't seen it all yet it ain't over they might slink away and go in and go underground for a while and go so that they can regroup or whatever the case may be until all of this stuff is settled and, uh, and, 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 and all of this stuff is, 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 is just 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 uh, uh, kind of blown over and all of it. They'll go, you know, they'll be quiet for a while, but they ain't going to be quiet long. So y'all know what's up. I, I, I got to read that again because that just, I, I, I mean, that just, that, 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 that did it for me. I got to read that again. It's it's just it just it it it. it. it was it it was it was poetic. It, it's just I I I can't find words to describe it. Here it is. If you think of yourself as a soldier doing the bidding of the commander in chief, you don't try to hide your actions. You assume you will be held up as a hero by the nation. Criminal defense lawyers Terry Canefield and Mark Reckel wrote last week. It's not like a bunch of people gathered on their own and decided to do this. It's, like, it's not like a mob. It's people who were asked to come by the president, encouraged to come by the president, and encouraged to do what they did by the president, and a number of others, said one attorney representing defendants charged in the breach. So right there, he was letting you know, Trump made me do it. That's going to be the defense. If anybody finds themselves actually being charged with some real shit. Trump made me do it. Trump was the devil that made me do it. So, you know, y'all get down in the description box, read this article. There, there, I'm sure there are other articles out there that come from a different perspective, but I wanted to bring it to you from the Washington Post. You know, Jeff Bezos owns Washington Post, and Jeff Bezos ain't, 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 ain't a friend and a fan of, 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 of uh, Trump, no way. So you got the New York Times and you got the Washington Post letting you know that these folks will not be held accountable for anything that they did and that at the end of the day, all of this will fall on the shoulders of Trump. Because like I said, they was just a bunch where the Washington Post wants to take it as far as calling them soldiers. And this is what y'all voted for. Because whether you voted for Trump or whether you... I, I mean, you'd have done better voting for Trump if you be honest. Just to be honest. You'd have been done better voting for him. I didn't vote for nobody. But you'd have done better voting for Trump. But anyway, uh, uh, this, this, this kind of foolishness is what we keep voting for. Because this is... Because Biden is, it ain't a bit better. If anything, he worse than Trump. He worse than Trump because he going to smile in your face and stab you in your back. Trump wasn't going to smile at you at all. And he might not stab you in the back, but he just wasn't going to fool with you.
But get in this uh, description box, read these articles, find other articles, do some of your own reading. You ain't got to take my word for nothing. It's right here. And, and, and just understand the fix is in. And understand your boy Biden ain't trying to do nothing about it. Your boy Biden ain't declaring no war on white supremacy. Even though white supremacy stormed the Capitol and killed a police officer and committed political violence, your boy Joe Biden ain't, ain't, ain't intended to do a thing about it. He, like I said, he's not intended to declare any war on, on white supremacy. Now, he might uh, 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 come up with some stuff and declare some war on you as a foundation of black America, but he ain't trying to declare no war on white supremacy. Neither is the FBI or the Justice Department or, or any of the rest of them. As soon as black folks accept that we're on our own and that we have no friends, and that nobody, and I do mean nobody, is coming to save us, we'll do a whole lot better. As soon as we, as a collective, just go ahead on and accept that. And just go ahead on and accept that we don't need anybody to come and save us. We built a whole freaking country. We built this. We built this. Y'all have a good night.